So I'm going to turn it over. Judy, she's going to do some problem stuff. So I'm not doing problem stuff. <laughs> I will sing how great thou art. Thank you. 
already know. You had art class, right? <laughs> okay, first, let's open with prayer. Father, we ask you, Lord, that your power will be revealed through the preaching today. And that you speak to us, not me, but your word through my signs. We ask that, you know, I have no power, but you are all powerful. To make our hearts whole, to be refreshed. And that is through your power of your word. Not through my doing. Your grace we ask for. We ask that you touch us and that you give me the right words. In Jesus' name. Okay, so this painting is a very old. Maybe the most famous painting of the Lord's Supper with the disciples before his death on the cross. This is the gentleman's name who painted it, Leonardo da Vinci. In the late 1400s, I believe, I might be wrong, but regardless, what is interesting here in this painting, when he had gotten it all together and was finished, he asked a friend to come and to look at the picture. And the friend observed, studied the picture, and said it was a beautiful picture and that he was attracted to one thing in the picture. It's not there now, but before, he was attracted to this one thing in the picture. And his friend said, oh, I love that. That's a beautiful cup. How it shined, you know, a cup to drink from. It was wonderful. And the artist, Leonardo da Vinci, His friend left. He told his friend to leave. And then later his friend came back. The cup was not there anymore. It was gone. Why? Because Leonardo da Vinci said, well, when you told me that you were attracted to just the cup or that what drew your attention in, I decided that that's not what I wanted to be the center or that was not meant to be the center. It was to be Jesus. So I took out the cup. I didn't, wasn't showing the cup anymore. He felt that it was important that the focus of the picture was Jesus. But I'm gonna let you know that this cup, he does have a cup here, it's there. It's over to the side now, but for some reason, he did put the cup there. He just moved it to the side. <coughs> but the point is, the focus is on Jesus. It's not a focus on the pastor of a church. Well, I prefer this other pastor. It's, they are, they're much better. No, that's not the intention. How many people are following that pastor? Oh, that means that there's a lot of people following that pastor. I should go there. And there's very few following this one, and not so much. Is that what we should be doing? I remember a couple. They were interpreters. They were looking for a church to attend. So they went to a hearing church, a very small church. The church itself, the building was old. You know, the church was in need of repair. But they would sit and enjoy the worship. The singing was beautiful. And when they left, they let me know. It says, oh, I've so enjoyed it. They so loved the Lord. 
It was such awesome worship. It was such a blessing. And I said, really? Yeah, even though there was a leak and a bucket <laughs> catching the water and very few people going, I found that to be very interesting. <coughs> you know, the pastor there is very powerful, and then a lot of people go, but there's no feeling of worship. You know, just a feel-good kind of emotion, maybe like a deaf club, but, you know, maybe there's just a few people going to this other church, but there's so much worship. So which does Jesus prefer? Jesus prefers the worship. It's just like this cup in this painting. Everything should refer to Jesus. So there was difficulties in the church in Corinth. The people, you know, were talking about the different pastors they were following. There was disagreements about which pastor was better, and it caused division. It says, so for when I follow Paul, and another said, I follow Apollos. Paul says, are you just being merely human? Meaning... You're thinking as the world thinks, focusing on what you like rather than what God has given you. You're thinking, oh, about what you like better. They're better speakers. So it's an interesting story. So one deaf church, deaf people really flocked to that church, and it exploded. And the deaf pastor there preached every Sunday for a few years. And when he resigned, he resigned for personal reasons. There was no pastor. Visitors didn't come back. <laughs> but why? Because they loved the language. They missed the point of what it was. It was about Jesus. Paul said, what are you doing? Following your likes the way of the world? It says, what then is Apollo? Then who is Apollo? He is not equal to Jesus. And what is Paul? Who am I? You know, just Paul said, didn't sit there and say, you know, I'm a great preacher and Apollo is not. No. Paul said, who am I? Paul looked at them both as what? Servants. Through whom you believed that the Lord had chosen to each. I planted the seed, meaning the gospel, or gave the gospel, and Apollo, he watered. But God gave the growth. But, meaning, Paul did his work. Apollo did his work. Did they have the power to grow it? No, not at all. Only God has the power. So like a farmer who works, it's a lot of work, right? To plant, to sow, to water. The farmer himself caused the, uses magic to help it grow <laughs> and makes it grow. Does he have that power? No, he does not. It's God. He provides the rain. 
He causes it to grow. That's God's work. Mm. Just like a person who preaches is planting. Another person who preaches is adding water. The growth comes from God. I remember when I was young, a young Christian, I think I was probably a sophomore. And I happened to tell a story to a person, you know, it was another student at the Death Institute in Kansas. I was telling this person, you need to repent. Remember I recently taught about repentance to put away. Repent, what do you mean? And so I had to explain. It was very basic what I explained. Not as much knowledge as I have today as a pastor, but at that time it was a very basic understanding of repentance. So I explained. So one of the dorm parents saw me signing and said, hey Brad, what are you talking about? What are you saying? Tell me. I was explaining about the need for repentance. If a person repents to receive salvation, but if they have repentance, they don't have new life, right? And he said, what? Really? And he thought about it, and I was kind of clueless to know what he was asking for. He told us to go to bed. So we went on to bed. And then the next morning, he came. The dorm parent came and says, oh, thank you so much. That, what you told me, helped me change. What? What did I do? I didn't do anything. I was just sharing scripture, God's word. And he came and said, thank you. Now I understand and receive salvation. And he became a Christian. I wasn't expecting that. Did I have the power? Was it my ability to convince him? No. It was the Holy Spirit's work talking with other boys. They got angry. Why? They missed his old way of talking. He used to use like foul language, bad words. And it went, he became different. They were not happy. So do you know what they said about me? That I brainwashed him. I said, no, I did not. But I rejoiced that God was all-powerful and his word changed his life. That caused me to rejoice. The others never understood. God gives increase in the growth. Paul and Apollos were doing their jobs as servants. That's all. So neither he who plants or he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. They work together. They're not doing separate jobs. They're not opposed. They work together. I forgot that piece of paper right there. If you don't mind giving that to me, that'd be great. Thank you. So if you see here, it says, and each will receive their wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. We work together. And you are God's feast. That's what's growing. And God's building. Meaning the church. The spiritual church. Brothers and sisters in Christ. That's who we are. Who causes the growth? God. Not me. Not any other preachers or pastors. I'm going to tell you something interesting happening 
many years ago, it's funny, in Texas, there was a convention, a hearing convention, and they were um, interpreters there. And this man named Steve Brown, he's hearing. He preached and spoke, and his voice was so deep. A very low voice, almost like Alan's voice. <laughs> it's a deep voice, Alan does. And the people were attracted to his voice. They would pay attention and listen as he spoke. It was very smooth. And people enjoyed it. They enjoyed his preaching. And when he got finished, the next speaker... His name was Jerry Bridges. He came up, and it's kind of funny. He said, well, I wish I had not been the second person to speak. I wish I had not, because my voice is not as good as the first speaker. His voice is very monotone, not a very deep voice. And the people laughed in the audience. So regardless, they listened. He did teach well. And maybe some people thought, yeah, I prefer the first speaker because his voice was so good. But I'm going to let you know that he, Jerry Bridges, was a wonderful writer. He writes a lot of Christian books very popular Christian books. So regardless of whether his speech is very monotone, God uses both of them. <coughs> he works together for the same kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. There's not two different kingdoms. They both are servants. So I want to emphasize that it is Jesus. Where's Tim? Will you get me a tissue, please? He is talking about Jesus himself. This is Jesus speaking. Oh, he is so sovereign and reigns. He is the head of the body, the church. He is in control. How big is the church? It is huge. We're talking about the spiritual church, meaning worldwide, all brothers and sisters in Christ who are saved with faith in Jesus, the whole world. One or two million. Or better. Plus, from those who have passed before us are counted. The God. <laughs> so Jesus himself is sovereign so we're talking about all brothers and sisters in Christ so what organization Amazon Amazon you know they're very big and there's many people who work for them, right? Yes. God is so much bigger than that is. So he and himself from the beginning, firstborn from the dead, Jesus himself was resurrected after he died on the cross. New life. New creation. Those of us who are saved are new creations. So the first revealed. That was Jesus. The first who rose from the dead. We will also rise from the dead. We will have glorified bodies. It says that everything possible from eternity to eternity. Jesus is the same 
yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He created the earth, the heavens, everything. Jesus is sovereign and shown through man, died and resurrected to new life, and you will have that too for those who are saved. Jesus himself will have a new heaven and a new earth. All powerful king, he is man. And we worship him. Before the world, there was sin. You know, you talk about on the news, the shootings, um, the military rockets, the economy, all political unrest. Everything seems to be mounting. Gas prices, inflation. So you remember that Jesus himself is king. And when he returns, everything will change. He will make everything right. All the problems and sin will be gone. Like a birthday cake with the candles on them, when he breathes, it's gone. New creation. Everything will be new. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. <clears throat> the world and everything is his. Sin will be no more. Problems, the economy, all the political unrest will be gone. <clears throat> so we have hope. That's what we look forward to. Amen? He is so powerful, all-powerful king. And is sovereign. I'm going to talk about this. Does anybody know what this is? Anybody want to get to this? What do you think this is? Let me explain it to you. It's a nut. You know, something like a screw and a bolt. But this is a big one. You see how big it is? It sits in your hand. And what is it used for? It's used on a helicopter. That's where you do the helicopter blade. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> this is a very important part of the helicopter. It holds the propellers or the blades. If it fell off, the helicopter would crash. Just one part. If the other part, maybe another part fell off, would the helicopter still fly? Yes. If something else came up, would the helicopter still be able to fly? Probably. But if this one piece fell off, the helicopter would crash. Do you know what it's called? What is this part called? It's a slang word. It's not real a, a vocabulary. It's a slang. What's it called? Jesus nut. Why do they call it that? Because <laughs> it's important. Jesus holds the universe. He holds it all together. In the military, maybe they were thinking Jesus himself being sovereign king over all things, you know, including the earth. He rules. He holds the universe. Everything. The stars, the planets, and everything he holds together. It's perfect. The Jesus nut. It's not nut like you're in crazy, but a nut like screw in a bolt. We need to understand. And we must be careful 
not to talk about liking one pastor over the other or who's better than the other. When you go to church, what do you look for in a church? Looking for those who, real worship, those who really study the word. Something that motivates you to fall in love with the Lord and study his word. It's not about the different problems or things that occur. It's that's all <coughs> vertical. I mean horizontal. We need to be vertical and look to God. I like this one story. It's very interesting. A person was complaining to a pastor. I don't like these different problems going on in the church. And the pastor was nodding, seems to be in agreement, or listening. You know, again, I don't like these people. He says, I want you to look at this cup and look very carefully as you walk. And when you finish, let me know when you get back with this cup full of water. Okay, so he's paying attention, being very careful. And then when he got back, he says, I'm back. And the pastor said, did you see what happened out there? No, I wasn't looking. No, I, you didn't see that happen over there? No. Did you see this <laughs> other problem over there? No, I was looking at the cup. <laughs> It's like looking at Jesus. <coughs> if that's who you have your eyes on, you don't see the other. <laughs> but why do people talk about Paul and Apollos and what they liked? Jesus himself is everything. So whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Meaning, if you don't have Jesus and have him as your Savior, you do not have life. You're spiritually dead. You have to have Jesus in order to have life. If you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. There's no relationship with God. You have to have Jesus with you. And then you have a relationship with the Father. If you have Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Amen? If you have Jesus, you have eternal life. Amen. If you have Jesus, you have an eternal home. Yes. If you have Jesus, you have brothers and sisters in Christ. All around the world. <laughs> if you have Jesus, you have a church. The real church. Those who worship and love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes? So if you don't have Jesus, nothing. you have nothing. Zero. I want... It, in, in ASL, I want deaf church, must have deaf church, whatever it is. But if you don't have Jesus, you absolutely have nothing. People talk about things I like, things I don't like. I don't want to go to church because I don't like those people. Why? Why do we do that? If you look, in recently chapters that we read, just as the first scripture, you know, we have to look at chapter 2. It says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Reason? The spiritual things are foolish to them. They're not interested in it. They have disdain. <coughs> They're holier than thou. You know, they're not wanting to be involved. They're looking for something different in church. Instead of focusing in and worshiping Jesus, they're looking for a get-together. Like a club. There's no worship, no focus in on Jesus. 
They gossip, maybe. They talk about worldly things, but there's no talk about Jesus. And that is very sad. That does happen. They're not safe. They don't understand. They don't understand spiritual things. For they, for he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. People who are not saved, they will talk about things, talk about what they've done, their successes. They'll gossip, talk about things that they don't like because they're not Christians. Right? Don't get attracted to them. Don't listen to them. Go to church. Visit churches for yourself. Those who really worship God, Jesus as King, look for that in the church. Yeah, they're not saved. That's part of the problem. Secondly, But I, brothers and sisters, could not address you as spiritual people. Let me start over again. But I, brothers, could not address, teach, encourage, help you grow deeper in God's word. I couldn't do that as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. Still babies, still sucking their thumb, not very versed in scripture. You know, you should be growing over time, not still drinking milk. Paul's encouraging them, study, grow, grow up, worship the Lord, look to him. People want to remain infants. You know, this is the um, transfiguration. Thank you. The transfiguration. You know, y'all are familiar with the story. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. And John, Peter, and James. The three were there. They saw this. So I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures help us understand. It says, And there appeared to them Elijah, Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. They were talking. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, meaning a honored and well-respected teacher, that was Jewish custom. It was honoring to call him rabbi. And Peter was frightened. He said, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Kind of sounds a little silly, right? But he was frightened and spoke. And it sounded silly. I'm going to make a tent for you and a tent for you and a tent for you. And Peter thought they were all equal. But that is not true. Who's the most important? Who? Jesus. <coughs> Jesus is the one. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. They spoke because they were scared. And it's interesting what was said. And then a cloud overshadowed them, the three disciples. They couldn't see. And a voice came from the cloud, the Father. This is my beloved son. Talking about Jesus. 
God called him his beloved son. Maybe you wonder why did he call Jesus the son? And I'll explain that. In the Old Testament, David, when he became king, he was considered the son of God. Because God had seen a person become king, God looked at him He was birthed to be called king. My son, born, meaning he became king. That's why we hear John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only beloved son. Because Jesus himself is king. Yeah. So the point here is when you listen to my beloved son. God the Father had already planned and Jesus was already sovereign. And he, when he returns, will make everything new. Judgment will be perfect. I will have vengeance and justice on those against my son. God himself takes such delight in his son. And what he will do to save the world, to bring everything to himself. What good are you? What good am I? Nothing. We're sinners. It's only through the grace and mercy through faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit works in us that we become a new creation, a new person in Christ. He does the work, not you and me. We praise him because he is good. Listen to him. That's what God is saying. Listen to my son. Salvation depends on him. Your future depends on him. Hope depends on him. He to make everything just will depend on him, not on you and me. So we praise Jesus and we thank him for everything. Listen to him. I'm talking about Jesus. Don't listen to a false teacher, a pastor, has his own opinions. Things that are not referencing the word of Christ. Listen to Jesus. Jesus is number one. That's the reason why we come to church. We come to worship him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but only Jesus. Maybe you, you know, think of things like things that you don't like about church. I prefer this. I prefer that. Maybe you need a cloud to engulf you. Be alone. Think. Removing all things and focusing in on Jesus. Find a local church to worship the Lord. Study him. Where is that church? And go there. It doesn't matter who the pastor is, if one's better than the other. You know, on TV, you see a lot of pastors preaching. Wow, they're just out there preaching. But they're false teachers. You want the person who has maybe some difficulties. <laughs> giving truth, though, from the Bible. Which one do you prefer? The one who gives truth. So this is the last part. It's a very interesting story, though. So Queen Elizabeth died recently. Y'all remember seeing that on the news? Who is this woman? 
clearly her bodyguard. <coughs> he follows her. But the story is very interesting. I was trying to find out if it was true, so I was looking at different news um, sources, and it is true. So two Americans, they were visiting in England. They were really in Scotland. And they were hiking, and they saw this older lady coming with this gentleman. They were both walking. And the American stopped, and the older lady said, hello. And they answered back, and they were both curious. What do you do? Or what are you doing here? We're going to a picnic. A picnic. Or I've been picnicking here for over 80 years <coughs> since I've been growing. I grew up here. The Americans said, oh, really? Then you know, have you met this queen, Queen Elizabeth? The Queen of England? You've seen the Queen of England? The old lady said, mm, no. But he has. He's seen her on a regular basis. The Americans were like, really? No. You've seen the Queen Elizabeth from time to time? And the gentleman said, yes. <laughs> oh, really? He wanted to take a picture with him. And the Americans, you know, came and stood around the man and asked the Queen to take a picture or asked the lady to take a picture. And then, oh, why don't I just take a picture of you with the lady? And they did. And the party guard took a picture with the two Americans, with the older lady. And then they left and said their goodbyes. And the man started laughing. <laughs> Why? Because the older lady was the queen. She was queen. <laughs> the two Americans did not recognize who she was. The Queen Elizabeth said, hey, I wish I was a fly on the wall. I'd like to see when they learned that the old lady was Queen Elizabeth. When they see that picture. You know, they bring it back to America and they're showing their friends, you know, oh, look at the pictures. Oh, this was an old lady we met, you know. It's not important, you know. Wait a minute, what? What? Wait, no! And you hit him on the back of the head. That is Queen Elizabeth. You can miss that that was Queen Elizabeth. They totally missed it. <laughs> so what's my point? Maybe you sitting there thinking, I go to church, I know Jesus, I know about him, I know scriptures. I know what Jesus did. I know he was a wonderful teacher, you know, but Jesus is over there. But you've missed what? The opportunity to really know who he is. Have you trusted Jesus for salvation? <laughs> you know him, or do you know about him? Have you met him? And has he changed your life? Do you understand that he is God? He came to die on the cross for our sins? Do you know that? Or do you just know it? What are you missing an opportunity to really know him? Take it. Take the chance. Study the Bible together. And study him. Don't miss an opportunity. Oh, later on to say, I just thought Jesus was over there. You know? And you've missed him in your life? Have you trusted Jesus for salvation and as your Savior? Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for the gospel. We know that many people don't even know what that word gospel means. But we know that it means Jesus. That he is the gospel all of the works that he has done and accomplished to bring everything to himself. 
God, you chose Jesus before the earth was created. Sent him as man to die on the cross. Innocent. But he accepted our guilt. And died and was resurrected. He is elevated, Lord, to the highest. I hope that no one will miss the opportunity and go home and just sit here to enjoy and to just go on with life and be lost. That lost opportunity to know who Jesus is. Without him, there is no life. So we pray that you will lead them to come to know who you are as our Savior and our Lord and our King. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.